I want you to imagine the most skeptical people on planet Earth. They're called lawyers. In fact, lawyers are trained for at least three years to be skeptical about everything. But what would it take to get in front of the most skeptical people in the world? I will tell you that not only was I able to do that, but actually I was able to do it very easily. In fact, so easily that when I got in front of this market, the common question I got was, Ed, it sounds like I should cancel my business that I'm doing with someone else and go with you. That was accomplished through the power of the single most powerful and important branding tool on planet Earth, which is your book. On today's show, I'm going to be showing you how to get it done fast and get a great book that you can be proud of into the world and how to blow up Amazon with your book. Ed Talks Live is next. All right, hey, what's up, party people? My name is Ed Rush, five-time number one best-selling author, your host for the most positive place on the planet for insanely implementable ideas. Someone in chat said, I think it was Robert, said, say implementable three times really fast. Today, we are gonna roll up our sleeves and I'm just gonna be very transparent right now and tell you that I've got about three hours worth of content to put into about 40 minutes, okay? Uh, so grab your pen, get ready to write down. I'm gonna move fast. I'm gonna give you a lot of resources that you can use today. Before I do that, jump in on the right-hand side. Tell us who you are, where you're from, what you do. In chat, the community has already jumped in and I've already said, like, chat just blew up, okay? Uh, so I'm going to say hello to some of my friends, but before uh, I do that, I want to just tell you that if you have written a book, this show, I will show you why maybe you didn't have the success that you wanted on that first or second or third book. If you haven't written a book, this show is designed to get you into motion, to get your book done. And here's the thing. Statistically, every single year, when asked over 200 million Americans say that they want to write a book someday. 200 million people, but every single year in the United States, roughly 300,000 books are written. Now, I am a Marine, that means I don't do math very well, but if you take 200 million and you subtract 300,000, you end up with something around 199 million 700,000 people who flat out didn't get it done. So if you want to write a book and share your message and create a movement and build your list and start a following, when would now be a really great time to do that? You know, I want to tell you one of the most important success principles you'll ever hear, which is this. If you want to write a book, then write a book. <laughs> Okay, I mean, it's as easy as that. I can actually end the show right here if I wanted to, but I'm just going to stop real quick and then I'm going to jump up on the whiteboard and start teaching. Uh, good morning, Barry. Thank you for your help this morning. I had the wrong episode on the wrong date, but I appreciate that. What's up, Robert? Good to see you, Wendell Bugs. Hello, Diana. Uh, grateful for you as well. Say implementable fast three times. I had not seen that. I haven't talked to Ed for quite a while, by the way. Uh, Dr. Wendy Lee says, I want to work with skeptical people. And the, the point is to get skeptical people to buy into what you're trying to say. I'm going to tell you a little bit of that story in a moment. What's up, oi oi? Hello, Gina. Good to see you. Ski, my man. From Motown, Philly. Good to see you, pal. Um, all right. So congratulations to you uh, as well. So I'm going to take you back uh, in history uh, really quickly. By the way, if you just joined us, my name is Ed Rush. This is How to Write a Book in a Month. Oh, man. Big announcement, by the way. This Tuesday on Ed Talks Live... Uh, I've got somebody absolutely amazing that's coming in. Golden Gloves Championship Boxer Alicia Doyle is coming in. Uh, and we're going to talk about how to accomplish anything. By the way, she was a female boxer back before there were female boxers. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to hear this story that will blow your mind. And you also hear what she's doing now, which is also absolutely incredible. So today we're going to talk about how to write a book in a month. And I'm going to walk you through the book writing and publishing process. I'm gonna share some secrets that are inside of Amazon. Before I do that, just for some context, I'm gonna show you the road that I took to publishing, some of the mistakes that I made along the way, how I corrected some of those mistakes and how you can avoid all of those mistakes to write and publish a book that'll totally blow your mind. So this was my very first book. <laughs> it's called 
I'm laughing. It's called Fighter Pilot Performance for Business. I wrote this book back in 2008. Uh, this book, if you flip all the way to the end, uh, it's, it's 88 pages. See that right there? It says page 88. I call this my 50 page book jammed into 88 pages. Now, the interesting thing about this book is I've sold over uh, almost 3,000 of these books. I think it's actually more now that I put it uh, into a Kindle uh, version. I actually made quite a bit of money and I used this book for speaking. I knew that I needed a book and so what I did is I took five articles that I had written and put on my website, edited those articles, put them into a book and published the book. Now this was long before Amazon, long before Kindle, well, it was long, long before Amazon was publishing the way they are now, uh, long before Kindle, I actually delivered 3,000 of these books in a huge pallet sitting in the front of my house. And I call this my Battlestar Galactica book because of the cover, okay? And I'm going to get to the cover uh, in just a moment, but I will tell you that having this book did help me get speaking deals because I brought the book in and I gave away free books to the people who were with me when I was speaking. But at first, this book was not a bestseller because I didn't know what I was doing when it came uh, to writing best-selling books. Now, fast forward to 2012. Uh, in 2011, the year before 2012, uh, I started a company with two other uh, business associates of mine. We were marketing to attorneys. And I mentioned at the beginning of the show that attorneys are the single most skeptical people on planet Earth. They're trained to be skeptical. So if you want to get in front of attorneys, there's a place called the Bar Association where you can go and speak in front of attorneys. But you, because the attorneys are, are so skeptical, the Bar Associations are very skeptical. They're very careful about the people that they put in front of their attorneys because as you can imagine the attorneys have a high bar haha, for who they bring in and speak and so for about a year we tried to approach bar associations to say hey we'd love to come in and speak on digital marketing for your attorneys and for the most part the executive directors or the CLE coordinators which are the people who book bar association talks would say a very elegant no an elegant note sounds like this. Oh, well, thank you for calling. Uh, we're totally booked right now, but we would love to talk to you maybe in the future. And by the way, that's a no. In 2012, we wrote this book. The idea was to create something that was a branding tool. This is a actually a hardcover book. It's called How to Turn Clicks into Clients. You can see the cover is actually really nicely done. Uh, the inside is, it's good. It's a good book. It's not a blow you away amazing, but it's about digital marketing. And so what I started doing was I would take this book and I would send it in the mail, two-day mail, to the bar associations. And I would wait for about three or four days and then I would make a phone call and I would say, I sent you a book a couple days ago. Did you get it? And they say, oh yeah, actually I have it sitting in front of me. And then I would say, my name is Ed Rush. I'm the author of the number one best-selling book, How to Turn Clicks into Clients. We're on a book tour as a part of our book tour. We're on a speaking tour and I wondered if you wanted us to come in and speak. And the answer was a resounding yes. In fact, 97% of the people that we got on the phone with and talked to, because you know some of the calls went to voicemail, 97% of the people we talked to booked us. We went from one talk in 2011 to, to uh, 48, no, oh, sorry, it was 40, yeah, 48 bar association talks in 2012, all because of a book. Now I wanna tell you a little secret. See this top that says Amazon's number one best-selling law office marketing book? We had this big plan back in January of 2012. We were going to email the world and have everyone that we knew email everyone that they knew to market this book. And one day I was on Amazon and I looked and I thought, wait a second, our book is the number three book in the law office marketing category on Amazon. Next thing you know, it was the number two book. And in that moment, my partners and I started contacting me. Everyone we knew said, hey, go buy this book. I'll give you 20 bucks back. When, when, just buy the book. And all of our friends went and bought the book and it became a number one best-selling book. Part of the key to that is Amazon's category system combined with Amazon's speed to aggregate its bestseller system, which I'll be talking about in just a moment. Now, later on, uh, about two years later, I wrote, wanted to write a book uh, that was a passion for me. So I wrote this book called Warrior. Uh, the subtitle of the book was How to Fight for Your Faith, Family, Finances, and Future. And it was a, it was a faith-based book. I actually wrote this book 
for the Christian community, uh, and it was a new take on how to stand up for what you believe in. This book was written because I wanted to share a message. Right after that, I wrote another book with a friend of mine named Mike Koenigs. This is called Top Gun Consulting. Top Gun Consulting was actually nothing more than a series of interviews that were transcribed and put into a book. Now, it was at this moment that I thought, you know what? I wanna do something new with this cover. In fact, I didn't love the subtitle of this book, the How to Fa Fight for Your Faith, uh, Family Finances and Future. I realized that people were coming to this book for another reason. So what I did was a book contest on 99design. Some of you have used 99designs before. If you haven't, the website is edrush.com slash 99designs. And when you go there, uh, people will compete for the opportunity to create a book cover for you, okay? I'm not gonna teach that today, but that's one of my best strategies for creating a book cover. And so what I did was I completely rebranded this book. This is the same book, same book on the insides, but I rebranded it and in the process using a little Amazon hack, I actually changed the subtitle. The subtitle of the book is, I think, a lot better. It's called, it says, Warrior, Understanding the Furious Love of the God Who Fights for you. And so I rebranded this book. Now, when I rebranded that book, I thought to myself, you know what? I don't like this Battlestar Galactica cover either. So I did another cover contest and created a second uh, title called Take the Shot. Okay, Top Gun Strategies for Accelerating Profit, Productivity, and Peace of Mind. This is the same book. It's the same book published under a different title. And this book, I went on to make a number one bestseller. Now, Here's a little secret I haven't told anybody before. Inside of this book contest, in 99designs, I got about 100 book covers. There were about 100 book cover ideas that I loved. Uh, or sorry, of the 100, there were about 20 that I loved. Now, this is the one I chose for this book, but interestingly enough, this cover right here was one of the ones inside of that contest. So two years later, when I wrote 21 Day Miracle, I went back to this designer and I said, hey, you still have that design that you put up there? And he said yes, and for just a few hundred dollars, I was able to pay him to create the cover for 21 Day Miracle. So, all in, there's one best-selling book. That was actually my first book. There's my second best-selling book. Here's my third best-selling book. Here's my fourth best-selling book. And here's my fifth best-selling book, 21 Day Miracle, which took the world by storm. Five books. Five books giving me the ability to say that I'm a five-time number one best-selling author and five books that positioned and branded me in the market that I wanted to. I've sold tens of thousands of books. I've had tens of thousands of people come to me because of my books. I've gotten doors open because of my books, introductions to celebrities because of my books, and I was actually even on a show on Fox about fishing because of my books. Now. I failed kindergarten, okay? And if you've ever seen me type, you will see, like if you ever come to an event, you come to the back and you watch if I'm working on my computer, I type like a chicken on amphetamines. I'm talking about hunt and peck and scratch, okay? I've tried to take typing lessons, just never took, okay? So there goes your last excuse. This is right here. This is probably 200,000 words or more. It's probably 300,000 words. And two of these books, this one here called Warrior, and this one here called 21 Day Miracle. I'm about to drop everything. This one here I wrote in seven days. This one here I wrote in eight. And these are my two most popular books, okay? So hopefully all the excuses just went out the window. Now, on today's show, what I'm going to be doing is breaking down the five core steps, and I'm gonna give you some ideas on how to promote market and uh, brand your book. But before I do that, I want to jump in the chat and say, hey, what's up, Russ Gordon, my man, good to see you as well. Um, uh, yeah, so Fighter Pilot is a bestseller, 3K copies sold. Um, no, actually, so I'm going to talk about Amazon's bestseller. You would be, you would be, you'll be blown away at how few copies you actually have to sell in a short period of time. In fact, I might just go teach that um, right off the bat. Okay. Hey, what's up, Charlotte? Thank you for your great comments. I appreciate that as well. Hey, what's up, John? Uh, you did it. Oh my gosh. Isn't that great? <laughs> that is so cool. I didn't even realize that you were actually watching this show. So there's John who created that awesome cover. Hey, y'all ought to exchange contact information with this guy because he, he knows what he's doing. All right. Um, yeah, I have the world. I have the world on my email list. That's, that's right. I'm going to, I'm going to teach this right now. Uh, Robert, okay. 
Uh, good. Um, I'm going to answer this question today. Thank you. Um, let's see. Question. For, oh boy, what's up, man? Pretty used inspiration I just got from your webcast. Yeah, just give me credit, dude. Just mention me it, w when you're quoting me. That's all. Thank you for that. I like it. Hey, what's up, Dennis? Good to see you uh, there as well. Hey, Arna, how are you? Yes. All right. Awesome to see that you're writing those books. By the way, I'm going to jump up on the board. I'm going to define. I'm going to do the first thing you asked me to do, which is to define bestseller. Okay. And I'm not, I'll actually go to Amazon and show you what I mean uh, when I define uh, bestseller. This is really important. What I'm about to teach you. Uh, one of the most important things that, that, that I will actually share with you. Before I do that, uh, there's a website below, edrush.com slash book mentor. Some of you are already in this program. Some of you don't even know that I'm doing this program. So this Tuesday, I'm launching my coach group and individual coaching program uh, surrounding books. I'm going to take my expertise at launching, branding, and promoting books and take it right to you to show you how to totally explode your brand with a book. If you've already written a book and you're disappointed with the results, this is the program for you. If you've never written a book, this is the program for you. My guarantee for you is that I'm going to make you a bestseller and I'm going to define what that is actually on the board uh, here in just a second. We're going to start with the content of your book, creating a great cover with title and subtitle. I'm going to talk to you about how to get great editing done, how to launch your book properly on Amazon. There's massive mistakes that people make when they launch their book and then how to become a bestseller. And if we do this right, you will be a best-selling author within a week or less of, of you um, launching your book. That's what this program is all about. Not cheap, by the way, but it's certainly not as expensive as my high-end coaching programs, okay? So that's below. It's edrust.com slash book mentor. We've got eight people in the program. My goal is to have 10, okay? So it's not going to be a big group and you get group coaching as well as individual coaching. So you get the benefit of me. Uh, helping you one on one, you get at least six calls with me, uh, including one one hour call where we're going to work on your categories. Again, I'm going to explain what this means in terms of the categories in just a second. Plus, you're going to get six group calls, and we're going to be helping each other with new ideas. We're going to be promoting each other's books. I'm actually going to be working on my book too uh, with the group as well. And as an extra bonus, I'm actually going to come and interview you here on Ed Talks Live so that we can promote your book. Okay, so that program is right below. I'm going to jump up on the white uh, board. What's up, Zach? Good to see you as well. Thank you, Delisa. There's the link. <laughs> hey, John, I sold this. This was Amazon's number one business book. It was the number 22 book over all books on Amazon. Sold over 30,000 copies. What's up, Terry? Uh, good to see you, man. Uh, it's a pleasure uh, to have you. Uh, the, Terry's a longtime coaching member of mine and friend. Brilliant, brilliant guy. Lives in the lives in the Tidewater area of Virginia, uh, Yorktown to be precise. Good to see you, buddy. All right, so I'm going to jump up on the whiteboard and I'm going to define your very first, the very first question that you all asked me, uh, which is what exactly is a bestseller? So what I'm going to do is let's start. There's Jim. Jim didn't answer my text, but he's going to answer me here on Facebook that he's going to come meet, meet me for coffee tomorrow. Okay, so let's decide. Let's just let's define what a bestseller is. Okay, so. I'm going to give you two categories. I'm going to give you New York Times, okay, and I'm going to give you Amazon. Now, when you are a New York Times best-selling author, you can say you're a New York Times best-selling author. When you are an Amazon, or, or you could call yourself a best-selling author. When you are a number one New York Times number one best-selling author, you can call yourself a New York Times number one best-selling author. Or you can call yourself a number one best-selling author. When you're an Amazon best-selling author, you can call yourself a best-selling author or an Amazon best-selling author. And when you're a number one best-selling author on Amazon, you can call yourself a number one best-selling author or an Amazon number one best-selling author. So when I say I'm a five-time number one best-selling author, I'm talking about my success mostly on Amazon, okay? Um, but if I had said New York Times, it would need to be on New York Times. Now, let me show you, uh, let me show you the difference between these two. So New York Times, has a set of categories for their books. They've got nonfiction, fiction, youth nonfiction, business fiction, okay, or business nonfiction. They have a set of categories, much like Amazon has a set of categories, okay? So Amazon has categories for Kindle books, for regular books. New York Times has categories for their books as well. New York Times aggregates their best seller list every week, okay? So once a week, Amazon, New York Times pulls together sales and says who are the best sellers for the week. Amazon aggregates their best seller list at least every hour. Do you see the difference right there? This is one week and every hour. Okay, now 
There are two distinct differences between these two platforms. New York Times has a very limited, less than 20, number of categories. Amazon has a very wide range of categories because they are a digital marketplace and they want to give a lot of options available, okay? So there are literally hundreds of categories, right? So let's say there's less than 20 here and there's more than 100 categories here. What this gives you an advantage of as an author on Amazon is it gives you the opportunity to find and place your book in less competitive categories, okay? So let's say the number one best-selling book in the United States is, uh, I don't know, let's, let's just say it's um, the, the next Harry Potter book. Well, if you put your book in that category, you will never be a number one bestseller unless you sell about 20,000 books a day, okay? But if you find a category that's less competitive, there's a really good chance you can become a bestseller. Now, here's the other key. Amazon aggregates their bestseller list every hour. True, in, the, in, the, in, in real application, there are less competitive books every day, there are more competitive books every hour. But for our purposes, it's every hour that they update their bestseller list and their bestseller categories. That's when they go through uh, their algorithm. So, to be a New York Times bestseller, perhaps you would have to sell 10,000 copies uh, or more, and to be a number one bestseller, you might need to sell 20,000 copies or more in a single week. Depending on the category on Amazon, you could actually sell as little as 40 books if you're in the proper category because of the aggregation speed of Amazon. Do you catch that? So like if you sold 40 books in a compressed period of time, you can become a bestseller on Amazon. And actually, in a certain case, you stay a bestseller because Amazon begins to promote your book uh, now to other people. So the strategy on Amazon is to compress sales into a certain period of time in a certain less competitive category, okay? And you can sell significantly less books and become a best-selling author. Now, because actually it's pretty darn easy to become a bestseller, sometimes people feel like, well, wait a second, how can that be a bestseller? Well, literally, Amazon will actually put on your book, right next to your book, literally on your book page, number one bestseller. Amazon will actually label your book as a number one bestselling book on their website. Now, if they say it, you can say it. Did you catch what I just said there? So you don't have to think about like, wait a second, it's not New York Times. Of course it's not New York Times. That's why you don't say you're a New York Times bestselling author. You say you're a best-selling author, okay? Now, of course, you could hit the jet stream. Man, I sold like 30,000 copies plus of this book right here, 21 Day Miracle. I mean, that's like legit. And I was 20, number 22 over all of the books on Amazon, definitely number one in my category. In fact, I stayed number one in my category for six straight months, okay? So this is how Amazon does their bestseller. That's the reason why when I do a bestseller push or a bestseller run, I always find a handful of categories on Amazon that are less competitive. I compress book sales into a, a, as close of a window as humanly possible, okay? That's why when my book first gets published, I don't tell anybody about it until I'm ready to really promote it and then I push as many sales as I can. And what my goal is, is to push sales into what I call the Amazon jet stream. If you start getting enough success, what Amazon begins to do is they start to promote you other places. And when they do that, if your book is compelling enough, you actually will get build your own momentum, okay? Literally, like you will actually get some momentum that can't stop. The best way to think about this is if you've ever seen like a locomotive, back to Harry Potter, you know that like the old locomotives? If you watch locomotives get started, it takes a lot of energy and effort for those things to get started. But you know what? If you stop shoveling coal when it's going like 100 miles an hour, it's going to go for a really long time. This is your job when it comes to Amazon. Hopefully that just made sense. I will be happy to answer anyone's questions when it comes to that. But Brian, you're going to have to sell significantly less books uh, in the period of time to become a number one bestseller. This is part of the system, and this is why knowing how to use the system is vitally important. I've seen more authors make big mistakes when it comes to the way that they launch their book. And remember, you're trying to give Amazon what they want, okay? Remember, Amazon, Amazon, Amazon wants you uh, to sell books. And so the more you help them do that, the better, okay? Arna says, 
That's our label sticks even when your numbers fall. You don't have to watch until 4 a.m. just to make sure you don't blink and miss it. No, so here's the thing. Um, so what happens is, so that number one label will stay on there as long as it's, the book is number one in its category. So let me just show you, let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna pull up, uh, it's gonna take me just a second to be able to pull this up. Um, hang on real quick, because this is actually pretty important. Um, And by the way, there's there's bestseller there's bestseller lists for um, Kindle and also for paperback. So let me let me show you this one right here. So currently, 21 Day Miracle is on the bet. This is my book. Okay, this is on the bestseller list at 36 in this category. Now let's say I go to this this one right here. See this book right here, Donald Miller, Building a Story Brand. This is a this is the number one best-selling book. See that number one right there? That's the top 100 books in this category, selling and sales presentations. Okay, so if I go to this book and I scroll down to where the bestseller listing is, watch this when I get there, check this out. See that? It's the number 5,000th book in the entire Kindle store, but it's number one in sales and selling and sales presentations. Now, because it says it's the number 5,000th book, but it's still the number one book in its category, it is the number one book, and this author, Donald Miller, is, is a number one best-selling author, okay? Now, based on what I know, I, I understand Amazon's algorithm probably about as good as anybody, okay? Amazon doesn't publish their algorithm. You have to figure it out by reverse engineering it, but I've helped over 1,000 people launch their books, and in the process, I've really started to figure it out. I will tell you, if you wanna beat Donald Miller's book in, in that particular category, you're going to need to sell about 40 to 50 books in about an hour, okay? That's what it would take to be number one in that category. I know you're like, wait a second, 40 or 50 books, but remember the time is compressed. Now, in the moment that you break into the top 10, which is very easy to do, when you know what you're doing, in that moment, you are a best-selling author. Even if sales fall away, and even if that ranking goes away, you're still a best-selling author. It's like you passed Go and collected $200. You get to keep the $200 even if you're not on Go anymore. Once you hit number one, Amazon, once, once Amazon says, hey, you're number one, you're now a number one best-selling author. So I had a client once, we promoted her book, got her to number one. I said, congratulations, you're a number one best-selling author. Three days later, she dropped to number two, and she said, now I can't call myself a number one best-selling I said, yeah, you can. Once you get there, you're, you know, it's like, once you, you know, once you uh, went to the Olympics, you're an Olympian. Even though you're not there now, you're still an Olympian, okay? So that's the way that works right there. Good, good, good question. Um, yes, you can fiddle with the price, okay? Uh, and you do have to keep an eye on it, but it's not gonna disappear. It stays there, even if you just hit it for an hour, it'll stay there. My experience, by the way, uh, is it's more like a four to six hour process by the time Amazon collects all of its data and publishes all of its data. So even though they're aggregating every hour, sometimes it takes a few hours. My experience is that even the most, uh, the most fickle book sale uh, will stay up there for about four to six hours. So yeah, you're gonna refresh, refresh the page a lot, but once you take your screenshots, uh, you're good to go. And Arna, if you're gonna do this process, uh, again, I don't, I'm not gonna go uh, um, uh, down the, the button pushing route. If you're gonna do this process, start your book at 99 cents, right? Because then you can email all your friends and say, hey, my book's 99 cents for today. Go, go, get, go get it. And I always tell people, if that's too much for you, I'll give you a dollar and you, and you can make some money out of the deal, okay? Uh, now, I always have people like this. They're like, but, but isn't that devaluing my content? Nope, sell for 99 cents, okay? This book, this book has been for sale for 99 cents for three years now. It's not devaluing your content. It's just, it's just a, a great promotional tool that you can use out in the world. No, they do not give you an alert. That's why you have to stay, stay on the page and, and refresh it. By the way, I have been doing that of, of night. By the way, we did this, we did this. Dennis Bauer, we actually used this show, Ed Talks Live, just a few months ago to promote Dennis's book, and Dennis became a number one bestseller uh, from the people, the community on this show. So if you've been thinking about, like, man, I don't know, should I get into Ed's book mentor thing? 
Go to the website below, apply. Look, if we get on the phone, you and I, and we decide the program's not right, which isn't likely, uh, you get a refund, all right? I'm not gonna keep you in a, a, a program that's not right for you, um, but it's an awesome deal. I mean, it's a great deal. Look, my coaching goes from 18 to about seven. $70,000 and this program hovers right at around 5K. So it's a no brainer if you wanna write, promote, and launch your book and my guarantee is that you're gonna be a bestseller. What that means is if we don't get it at first, which we probably will, uh, then we're gonna keep at it. And I'm gonna keep using it and promoting it. I'll promote it on my social, okay, and everything. So you'll have a good time and I'll have a good time too. All right, so that's the secret behind the Amazon, the difference between New York Times and Amazon. Some people get asked questions about that or are confused about that. And frankly, sometimes people feel bad about it because it's so easy. Just because it's easy doesn't mean that it, look, you wrote a book, you figured out how the system works. Very few people in the world actually even have any idea how the system works. So under, understanding how that system works is part of the key. You all heard the story before of the plumber. There's this big, uh, this couple, or they're in their house, the water, main breaks and there's water shooting everywhere, okay? And they've got water flowing into their kitchen and out their front door and they immediately call a plumber and the plumber comes, walks around the house for about 15 minutes, testing all the pipes, seeing where it all is, okay? And um, the plumber comes to one spot, puts a patch on one spot, hits the thing twice, the leak completely goes away and it's all perfectly fixed and it takes a minute. And the guy the plumber hands them a bill for $200 and the guy looks at it and goes, $200, man, all you did was patch something, tap something, it took you like a minute. And the plumber took the thing back and it said, and, and rewrote it and said, uh, patching and hitting, $1, knowing where to patch and hit, $199. So part of the key to success in business is knowing how to do it, when to do it, and where to do it, and having the wisdom to be able to do that. And like I said, this is an earned skill. It took me years, years to be able to figure out and understand how Amazon's Jetstream algorithm uh, worked and then to be able to implement it on behalf of my clients. And by the way, some of you who are sitting here on the show right now have, have, have benefited uh, from that expertise. Okay, so grab a pen, get ready to write some stuff down. I've got five main things that I'm gonna be sharing with you today. Then I'm gonna stick around and hopefully answer some of your questions. If you have any, feel free to go ahead and throw those into chat. Number one, the very first thing that you're gonna do when you're brainstorming and building a book is to create a compelling hook for your book, okay? Look, I haven't even talked about writing yet. I'm talking about creating a hook for your book. So for example, uh, there's a book uh, right up here on the right-hand side called Miracle Morning. This is a book that was written by my friend, Hal Elrod. Miracle Morning is how to accomplish more before, 5 a. Or before 8 a.m. The idea behind the book is you wake up early, you get a whole bunch of stuff done in the morning before anybody's even awake and you've had this amazingly productive day even before most people are eating breakfast. It's a very good book, by the way, and Hal is a good author. He's built this great community, but fundamentally, the hook of Miracle Morning is a time-tested success principle that's basically been around forever. I mean, the idea of waking up early, you can read about that all the way back in the book of Proverbs, for crying out loud, and that book was written about like 800 BC, okay? And so look, the idea of getting up early um, uh, and getting things done early is not a new concept, but what Hal did in Miracle Morning is he repackaged a commonly held success belief system into a new package with a new process. Now, when I just described that, sometimes people think, well, is that like plagiarism? No, it's not plagiarism, as long as you're not taking the idea and copying it wholesale into your process. And one of the most, one of the biggest breakthroughs I began to understand when it comes to teaching is teaching isn't coming up with new thing after new thing after new thing. More times than not, it's a new spin on an old idea. So for example, just a week ago, some of you heard me teach the new way I have for setting goals. Well, that started with gratitude. It moved into uh, prayer, and then it moved into actually setting your objectives for your year, okay? Now, the idea of gratitude, that's not new. The idea of prayer, that's not new. The idea of goal setting, that's not new. But that packaging, the way that I put it together, is truly an innovative take on a set of old ideas. One of the keys, if you're going to write a book, is to be able to repackage something into a system 
that sounds new because it is new, not because the principles are new, but because the packaging is new. Did you catch that? Like for example, the book that I already showed you, 21 Day Miracle. 21 Day Miracle is a book about how to get things done fast. 21 Day Miracle is a book about strategic sprints, accomplishing things faster because you've been able to put your goals down and get it done in a compressed period of time. Now, let's just be honest with each other. The concept of speed is nothing new. In fact, people have been writing and talking about that since the beginning of time. The concept of compressing time isn't new and the idea of 21 days isn't new. You can actually go all the way back once again to the Old Testament book of Daniel to see how Daniel took a 21 day period of time to fast and pray for the future of his country. So that time frame isn't new. The success principle of speed isn't new, but when you bring it together into a system that takes some old concepts and packages packages into it, package it, package, I'm gonna get this, this phrase right, packages it into a new and innovative way, it is new and it is innovative because of the repackaging, okay? So when you're creating a hook for your book, it doesn't need to be new. You don't have to sit in your chair and meditate for weeks and weeks and weeks and be like, I have to come up with a new idea. I mean, think about it. Like The Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren, the idea of building goals around your purpose, that's not new, right? But the idea of building this process around purpose was truly new and innovative, true and innovative enough for him to sell about 30 million copies of his book, okay? So I'm gonna jump into chat real quick answer some questions. Yes, it's a good book. He's a good guy too. Um, good. Thank you, Charlotte. I will answer, uh, I will answer that. Um, I'm going to an- try to answer that at the end of the show. Yes. Number one bestseller. You are the man, dude. Love it. Okay. So the first one is to build your hook is to build your hook around your book. Okay. So let's go to number two, how to write a book in a month, okay? How to write a book in a month. Now, uh, this book, 21 Day Miracle, uh, you heard me say I wrote this in eight days of actual writing. This book, Warrior, uh, I wrote this in uh, seven days of actual writing. Interestingly, this one's longer. This is 288 pages, this is about 200 pages, and I wrote this in less than a week. Now, there are a couple strategies for how I write books fast. The first thing you should know is I don't write trash, okay? I don't, like you've gone to Amazon before probably and bought somebody's Kindle book. Like I I bought this book recently. I'm interested in raising turkeys, uh, turkeys and pigs actually. So I bought this book on, and like the first three pages, it was like half half the page was misspelled. I'm like, that's not a, that's not a very good, even though the content's really good, that's not a very good book, okay? So I don't write trash. I don't even write good books. I don't want to write a good book. What I want to write is a great book, okay? So the first thing you should know is if you're gonna write fast, if you're gonna write a book well, it doesn't, you don't have to sacrifice quality for speed, okay? In fact, I would argue that you get better quality when you move fast. The idea of going up to the pond and spending three years writing Walden, uh, I think is very, very outdated. And I know a lot of people who say, hey, I'm gonna do an hour a day. I'm just gonna write for an hour a day. My thought on that is it's better than nothing, by the way. If you write at least an hour a day, you're at least going to be getting into the groove of things, but go back to that locomotive. Remember this? Remember when I said this, the, the, the locomotive sort of starts kind of slow, but as it really picks up steam, things start to work really well. So let me tell you about chapter one, okay? When you sit down to write your book, actually, sometimes you start with an intro. Sometimes you start with an introduction, and typically what I will do with my books is I write the introduction last because I've already written the book then I can write a really great introduction. So let's start with chapter one. Chapter one, when you start writing, just assume it's awful. I mean, sometimes you're writing, you ever do this, by the way, you're writing and you're like, man, this is really bad. And you like delete the whole thing and you start over. Don't do that, just write. Just give yourself permission to get to kind of a pretty crappy first draft on chapter one. Chapter two, chapter two barely scrapes by as okay. Chapter three, 
good. Chapter 4, better. Everything past chapter 5, oh my gosh. It's like, it's like that feeling you get when you're on your way down the water slide, okay? It is good, good, good. And here's why. You're building your momentum. This is the reason why I write in an undistracted environment. On the days that I write, if I'm writing a book, I'll wake up in the morning, I'll do a little prayer meditation, get my brain moving, and sometimes I'll just read for like a half an hour, like a book that I like, for no other reason than just to get into the priming of the pump, okay? Then I will just sit down and write. Usually that starts at about 8.39, I'm, I'm well fed, I've got a nice cup of coffee, and I'm gonna rock. And usually I sit and write for like three, four, hours before getting up, maybe get some lunch and sit back down. Now, almost every day, there is a time in the afternoon, usually about two to three in the afternoon, where I'm like, I can't do it anymore. And that's when I stop. I don't do it when I'm out of energy. So I will get a good sprint. I'll get about nine in the morning to about two in the afternoon with a lunch break in between. And during that time, I will typically write about six to 8,000 words. The beginning isn't all that great, especially on day one. In fact, you have to give yourself permission just to be okay with whatever drivel just got onto the page because here's the thing. You're gonna start day two, you're gonna start writing, and you're gonna speed up into this momentum that you had before and it's gonna be good and good and good. And guess what, when you're done writing, you can go back and erase this chapter, this chapter, this chapter, and you can rewrite it when you're in momentum, okay? Part of writing really, really well is just creating and sustaining momentum. So if you've ever had that experience before where you're like, my friend Michael Haig says stage fright isn't sitting in front of a white blank screen. Stage fright is your sec second straight week staring at watching Netflix reruns. Okay. Sometimes you ever have that feeling where you're like, I know I should be writing, but like you can think of everything else to do. Sometimes you just need to get it going, start moving and give yourself permission for the first two pages to be nothing. Okay. Last thing I'll do in writing really quickly. Don't edit and write at the same time. It's very common with today's editorial tools, Grammarly or even this, the tools inside of Google Docs, to write and then edit and then write and edit and that's giving your conscious mind two things to do at one time instead of one. I know there's thing, red lines that show up and green lines that show up, just ignore them. Don't worry if you spelled a word wrong. Don't worry if it's incomprehensible what you just wrote, just keep writing. Just get the process to go, okay? So that is the first step on how to write a book in a month. All right, really quickly, gonna jump into chat. Um, thank you, that's exactly true, isn't it? Uh, yeah, so I usually just start in the beginning and go. Occasionally, um, or I will actually start, sometimes I'll have a frequently asked questions. Sometimes I start there just to kind of move a little bit, but usually I just start in chapter one and just start to go, and I know that I'm gonna go back, and oftentimes I will actually completely rewrite uh, chapter one and uh, sometimes chapter two. Uh, or it's just a huge edit, which I'm gonna get to in just a second, okay? So, thank you. Hey, what's up, Marty? Good to see you. Welcome back. Okay, so we covered creating a compelling title, writing a book in a month. Let's go to number three. Oh, by the way, I've got a great resource for you. I, f I totally forgot about this. Um, this. This resource below, this is totally free. Uh, don't go there now, wait till after the show. It's edrush.com slash fast book. edrush.com slash fast book. It's just an article I wrote. It's sitting on LinkedIn, uh, and it's just on how to write a book fast, okay? So that's just a cool resource I thought that I would give you uh, that would be a, a great benefit to you. Writing is rewriting, isn't that true? Okay, so Bob says, do you outline or use sticky notes? So here's the thing. Uh, I have a process, Bob, I don't recommend. I don't actually recommend it at all. In fact, it works really well for me, but I wouldn't recommend it for writing. I actually have a very, very loose outline when I write, and I just go. <laughs> so I would highly recommend, like for example, Jim House is sitting here on chat right now. I would work with somebody like Jim or join my book mentor program and help, help me help you outline your book well. I would definitely not do what I'm teaching uh, to do, okay? Uh, it's like a pitcher that throws sidearm who wouldn't recommend that somebody else uh, throws sidearm. Thank you, fastbook, edrest.com slash fastbook. All right, so the cover is the book. <laughs> the cover is the book. The reason that, that I put that on there is there's a, there's a, my daughter, my two-year-old loves this Mary Poppins song. The cover is not the book. Well, guess what? The cover is the book. 99% of the people who see your book will only ever see your cover. During that three seconds that they're looking at the cover of your book, 
They're making a hundred judgments about your book, your brand, about you, about your message. That's just the way it is. So you've ever heard somebody say, oh, but uh, you know, don't judge a book by its cover. Well, the reason they say don't judge a book by its cover is because everyone judges a book by its cover. So several years ago, I had a friend come to me and she said, I'm going to write a book. And I said, well, tell me about your book. She said, the title is The Elephant is Yellow. And I said a sentence that you never want to hear after you tell someone the title of your book, which is, so what's your book about? I mean, think about it for a second. If you handed somebody the book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, somebody looked at the book and said, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, they would never say, so what's this book about? It's on it. It says Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. This book, 21 Day Miracle, I read at the top, it says, how to change anything in three short weeks. I would never give this book to somebody and have them go, well, wait a second, uh, what's this book about? So the first and most important rule about your cover is that you need a title or a subtitle that delivers a big promise. Did you catch that? You need a title or a subtitle that delivers a big promise. Somebody looking at that should be like, ah, I get it, and that's for me. Some of the three most important words of marketing. The second thing I found is that the words how to, the phrase how to, for the most part should be explicitly stated on your cover or assumed on your cover. What I mean by explicitly stated would be something like how to change anything in three short weeks. This book says understanding the furious love of the God who fights for you, but really it's assumed that the word is how to understand the furious love of the God who fights for you. Top Gun Consulting, how to create a fun and lucrative business, sharing your knowledge, experience, or story. How to turn clicks into clients. The word how to is, phrase how to is in the cover, by the way, in the subtitle says the ultimate law firm guide for getting more clients through the internet or how to get more clients uh, through the internet. Take the shot, Top Gun strategies for accelerating profit, productivity, and peace of mind. How to is assumed uh, in the cover. The book Warrior, how to fight for your faith, family, finances, and freedom. The idea is that those that the thought on how to do something, this is for business, this is for nonfiction books, by the way, should be embedded into your cover. The third thing, and this is actually really important, is that size matters. Most of the time you're going to spend with your book, you're gonna spend like this. This is my book, I love my book, I love every word of my book. Most people though, this is about what they're gonna see. <laughs> like, like a little tiny bit of it really, really far away. Like this right here is about what people see from your book. Like if you go look at the Amazon, little, the little thumbnails on Amazon, that's about how far away it is and that's about how small it is, okay? So like there's a reason why that word miracle is, you can see that word miracle. Because on cover, size matters. The idea of jamming everything you can into this tiny little cover and having 17 different images you know, and like a picture of your cat, you know, and a picture of like your a balcony on your apartment because it's really important to your book. All that stuff can go inside of the book. The cover should pop. The cover should grab someone in. The cover should deliver a big promise and the cover should show someone how to do something. When you do that, you will create what I've talked about as the Amazon jet stream. Amazon works off of clicks. The more people click your book, the more people buy your book. And you better bet Amazon knows every single piece of real estate on their website, what should be clicked and what should be bought. And if you begin to outperform the books that you're competing against, you're going to win every single time. Okay, so let me jump into chat, make sure I haven't missed anything. Good, no other questions. I'm gonna try to get to your question. Um, I think the question came from Charlotte. Uh, I'm gonna get to your question in a moment. Uh, but let me get to two more things and then we'll get to wrap it up. Okay. So book editing strategies. I'm going to give you, uh, I'm going to tell you a, um, 
Damaging admission. I hate editing. Hate, 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 hate. I love writing. I love it. I love it. I've had moments where I was crying in the middle of writing. It felt so amazing. Okay, I love the creative process. I love coming coming up with new ideas. And then when I'm done with the book, you can ask Jim House, who was my publisher for my last book. Oh my gosh, I can't get, I would rather I have this big hill side of my property. It's Cal, Southern California, so it's desert scape. It's covered with like prickly bushes and and uh, and cactuses. Okay, I would for real. I would rather be covered in honey and thrown off the the cliff and roll all the way down the cliff if it meant I didn't have to edit my book. But you do have to edit your book. And and I, I know that sounds extreme, but that's how much I really don't like it. Okay, so. When it comes to editing, most authors think, well, you know what, I'm just gonna hire an editor. And you are gonna hire an editor, but what most authors don't realize is you're actually going to have four editors, not one. Now these four roles, I should say four editorial roles, these four roles aren't, don't have to be four people, but they often are four different people, okay? The very first editor of your book is you, okay? You are going to do at least three editing passes on your book and potentially even more. The first is what I usually do. When I get done with a chapter, I usually go back, and just edit through it lightly, just to clean up some of the misspelling, some of that stuff. So that's usually like the first thing. When I'm actually done with my book, I will actually run through the whole book at least another time and do another editing pass. My third, personally, this is what I do. My third editing pass, I'm normally deleting things. My third pass, I'm normally trying to get things that Get rid of things that aren't needed or maybe are redundant. Things that aren't needed or maybe are redundant. <laughs> okay, things that aren't needed or redundant. Okay, so my fourth, third or fourth editing pass, print the whole book off. I will actually read my book out loud. You'll be amazed at what you catch when you read your book out loud. You'll see the word what, what next to each other that you never saw with your eyes until you read what, 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 what? Why is that sitting there? So the first editing is you. Again, it's a cumbersome process. I don't personally like it, but you need to do it. Number two would be a person called a content editor. This actually was Jim House for 21 Day Miracle. A content editor is a person who goes through the book and reads it for continuity and to make sure that you're creating a, a, a proper argument in the discussion. So I'm gonna tell you something that I barely uh, tell, want to tell anybody. I don't even want to admit it. But when I did this book with Jim, there was a chapter that I liked, but I kind of got bored with, honestly. <laughs> and um, and when Jim read the book, he said, now, chapter four, um, it didn't seem like you finished it. You need to complete the discussion. Could you maybe give some examples of this principle? And, and, and he said, it was almost like you were just, you just didn't finish it. And I said, well, I didn't finish it because I got bored with it. And he goes, well, could you finish it? <laughs> so I, my point was having somebody look at that and see, wait, wait, it feels like you fell off a cliff. Now, here's the thing. A reader, if you're not making a thorough discussion. If it's bumpy along the way, a reader reading your book, they'll just leave. They won't email you and be like, could you finish chapter four? They're just gonna leave, okay? And by the way, Amazon knows how far people read in their Kindle books and they give you credit for that, okay? So you're gonna have a content editor. Number three, you're gonna have what's called a manuscript editor. This is what you think of when you think of an editor. A person who goes through and fixes spelling and grammar and makes sure you don't have two periods at the end of a sentence. That's a manuscript editor. And then finally, you're gonna have a proofreader. And sometimes the proofreader is one of these two, sometimes it's not. What happens in between here is you're gonna lay your book out, which I'm gonna mention, uh, talk about uh, in just a moment. And then once you lay the book out, oftentimes you have another person go through to run through it to catch some things in the final layout that may have not shown up in any of the editing passes. Okay, so that is the strategy to editing a, a great book so that you can launch a great book. All right, really quickly into chat. Question, when you're writing a book, is it the only thing you're working on? Yeah, 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 I'll, I'm gonna, I'll, get, to, I'll get to that. I, I hate it, <laughs> Jim, I really do, I really do. All right, last thing, uh, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay a little longer today. I got a, it looks like I've got a few questions, and by the way, if you're like, Ed, I need help, I'm gonna write a book, but I need help, look below. This is your website right here, Book Mentor, okay? edrush.com slash book mentor. This is the coaching program I'm launching in one week. Today's Thursday, the 14th of January. If you're watching a live show, 
The program launches next Tuesday, okay? And man, you could maybe join it late, but you wanna be on time. So, uh, so if you're interested, the website's below. If you, if you wanna get some questions answered, email me and I will get with you uh, by Monday, okay? We can jump on the phone. If, you, if you're on the fence, like for real, if you're on the fence, okay? It's a 5K program, there are payment options. It is a great deal. The rest of my coaching starts at 18 plus, okay? Uh, and you're gonna get a lot of time with me and a lot of time with some very powerful people. This, this group is awesome. This group has some big, big players in it and you're gonna wanna be a part of this group. Okay, that like maybe the last time I say it, maybe the second to last time. Okay, last thing. Book launch secrets. Let's talk about how to launch your book into the stratosphere. So the first thing you should know uh, is when you get your book ready on Amazon, you're actually gonna have four files. Okay, you're gonna have two Kindle versions, you're gonna have two Kindle files, and you're gonna have two paperback files. I recommend when you launch your book, start with Kindle, start at 99 cents. Again, people say, hey, wait a second, I don't wanna devalue my content, don't you worry about that. Get your book in front of as many people as humanly possible, and the fastest way to get book sales is 99 cents. By the way, Amazon has all the mathematical algorithms. They have showed me time and time again, if I changed my price to $2.99 on Kindle, I would, I would probably make gross sales. I would actually make more money, but buyers would go down. And I use my book as a lead generator. I use my book as a, as a positioning tool. So I'm more interested in the numbers than I am in the money, okay? The different $2 is nearly insignificant for my business and yours, okay? But a great new lead is not, okay? So there's two files. Uh, the first is the cover file, which is usually a JPEG. You, you don't have to worry about this. I can help you through all this stuff. And the other one is the inside. This is actually the manuscript of the Kindle, which is normally an EPUB, E-P-U-B, or an M-O-B-I file. EPUB or MOBI. Paperback, you're gonna have a cover, which is usually a PDF and then you're going to have the inside, okay, which is also a PDF. Those are the four files that you're gonna upload. And normally we just start with a Kindle and launch the book primarily as a Kindle. Now, the second thing you're going to do is you're going to pick uh, the right categories. The right categories. Amazon has a category system. You picking the right categories will ensure that your book becomes a bestseller. And the third thing you're going to do when your book is ready and the categories are ready is you're gonna launch your book and compress as many sales into a shorter period of time as possible. Ideally, you'd like to get up to 100 sales in one hour on your new book. So when you first upload your book, don't tell anyone about it. Don't tell them to go buy it. Wait until you're ready to compress the sales together and launch it into what I call Amazon's jet stream. Amazon's jet stream is simply this. Amazon wants to make money. Okay, let's face it. If your book is converting and selling well, they're gonna put it in more and more and more places. And one day, back in 2019, I woke up in the morning, I looked at my book, and it was the number 22 book over all books on Amazon. I had sold over 1,000 copies of the book before nine o'clock in the morning. It was crazy. I was actually walking through the airport. I thought something was wrong. And all of a sudden, I realized something happened today. And I still, to this day, don't know what happened. All I know is Amazon used one of their promotional outlets to push my book and I gave them what they wanted, which is over a thousand sales, okay? So I'm gonna sit down real quick. I'm gonna answer some of your questions. I, I told you I would stick around just a little bit longer today. Uh, so I'm gonna answer some of your questions. Thank you, Gina, for reposting your question. Uh, and then we're gonna wrap it up today. By the way, Book Mentor starts on Tuesday. The website's below and then, um, I forgot, I have another resource for you that I forgot to mention. I have another article that I did on Medium on, on creating book covers. It covers the three principles that I taught up there, edrush.com slash book cover. And don't forget, on Tuesday, I'm interviewing Alicia Duell, a pro boxer and uh, incredible entrepreneur, and we're gonna talk about how to accomplish anything. All right, so let's go to the questions. Um, okay, so... This is, uh, this is a, a really important point. I've been in journalism decades and books don't make you money. It's a follow-up from the books that makes you money. Um, so, 100% right. If you're writing Harry Potter books, the, the actual books, you're gonna probably be a billionaire. If you're Stephen King uh, or, or um, Lee Child, I thought it was interesting. When I first started in business, I listened to Jay Conrad Levinson, 
uh, which is the, he was a writer of Guerrilla Marketing. And he said, uh, Guerrilla Marketing is my $10 million book. I thought, man, I want, to want one of those $10 million books. He said, I got $35,000 from the sale of, sales of the book in my advance, and the other $9,965,000 I got from speaking, consulting, product sales, and events. Huh? Think about that for a second. So even a book like Guerrilla Marketing, he leveraged to become a business. And the best thing I can tell you as evidence for this is the hundreds of people that became Oprah's book of the month, like Oprah's book club, book of the month, the one that she had on her show, literally the hundreds of people. There are, there are a handful of authors, Dr. Oz is one of them, uh, a handful of authors who really made it big after that. Most of them saw a big spike in sales and then just simply dropped off because that's what happens if you don't actually have a back end. Thanks, Russ. Oh, I won't make her mad. I'm, I'm working on boxing too, so. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, good. All right, let me go back to the question. So Gina says, when you're writing a book, is it the only thing you're working on? I can't switch back and forth between projects. So here's what I do. I wake up in the morning, I write, 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 and then when I run out of steam, uh, Gina, that's like 2.33 in the afternoon usually, that's when I'll go check my email and just catch up on things. And the reason I do that at the end of the day is because I, I need like, one tenth of my brain cells to check my email, and I need ten tenths of my brain cells, one uh, hundred percent of my brain cells to write the book. So I do that in the morning, and then in the afternoon, throw some stuff on social media, go for a walk, or whatever. Okay. So yeah, I focus and intense. I put my time intensively into that. Uh, the article that's below uh, fast edrest.com slash fastbook, totally free article. Um, it's on, um, it'll just show you how to do my, uh, do your book fast. Let me, uh, let me just show it to you really quickly because I did something here that I've never done before. Um, which I actually thought was really funny. Um, let me show it to you. Okay. So here's the article on LinkedIn. Uh, and I talk about in here, I talk about some of the principles, right? Give yourself permission to write a crappy first draft. Don't write and edit at the same time. Right, right, and feel the momentum, what I taught today, right? Chapter one stinks, chapter two. I said in this, I said chapter one is something like what Curious George would write while riding backwards on a horse while drinking beer. <laughs> what, what, what something Curious George wrote with an ink blotter drunk while riding a horse. That was, that was it, you know? And I talk about how it gets better and better and better and how to write without distraction and how to edit uh, your book afterwards. So that's just a free resource, Gina, that you've got there available to you as well. Um, let me go up. I have one other question. I'm going to find it. Oh, Carol, uh, Charlotte, how much marketing material should you put into the book? So here's what I did. I, uh, um, Charlotte, I don't know if you have a copy of 21 Day Miracle. If you don't, just go to Amazon and get it. Um, I would highly recommend getting the paperback version and, uh, and just going through it and seeing how much I put in there. Now, there's two there's two and a half, I think, marketing things. So the first thing is the push, the marketing push of the book is to get people to go to the membership site that goes along with the book. Uh, what I ended up doing inside of the book is the front page and the back page, send people to the membership site, and then all of the resources in the book are also in, the, it's all free, the membership site. The reason I did this is what I found is I was putting a lot of, of cool tools inside of the footnotes. Like for example, I would talk about writing a book and I would say, if you want to write a book fast, go see this article. And I would put the article link like I just put in there. And I found I had all these extra links that were sitting in the footnotes that were resources. What I did was put all those into the membership site. So literally every, every resource in the book sent them to the membership site to get the resource. It made it easy for me to put the link, sync one link every single time uh, on there. And it made it easy for the person to go one-stop shop. Everything is, is in one place. That's how I got over 8,000, check it out, eight, over 8,000 leads from this book alone, over 8,000 email leads from this book alone. It was because the resources were in the book. Now, I don't personally do a lot of personal promotion and branding in the book. Like I don't make, in the middle of the second chapter, start talking about my consulting. I do, I do mention it throughout, and then in the back, I talk about hiring me to speak and hiring me uh, to do consulting. So the book itself is not a big, uh, it, it doesn't read 
like it's a marketing message. The book itself reads like a great book. My thought with this book was to create something that people would really love and that would really change their life and that would attract them to me, okay? So that's my thought as far as the book goes. All right, cool. Yeah, if you haven't read the book, uh, the footnotes are like, I always say, tell people, the footnotes of, my, of the book are like my sarcastic twin brother. I don't have a twin brother, but I always envisioned my sarcastic twin brother sitting over my shoulder while I'm writing and making like sarcastic comments as I was writing it. That's what the footnotes are. So thank you. Um, great. Okay, good. Good. Yeah, so you, you can get kind of the feel of that. It wasn't, it wasn't designed to pitch. It was designed to help people, but also to create a movement. Okay, so quick review. Today, uh, I talked about how to write a book in a month, talked about Amazon's process, how to create a great hook for your book, how to write a book in a month, the covers, the book, book editing strategies and book launch secrets. Be sure to come back on Tuesday. Uh, I'm going to be interviewing Alicia Doyle. By the way, if you haven't had a chance to do it, Book Mentor starts next week. Again, either just go and roll. Uh, and if, if you really are really thinking about it and you want to ask a couple questions, I'll get you on the schedule for a Monday, okay? And if you're watching this on recording, he, email me anyway. Maybe, maybe we'll be doing another uh, version of that as well, okay? So that's it for today's show. Don't forget, you have a world to change with your message. Uh, and I can't think of a better way to do it than a book. I, I, I mean, there are thousands of promotional branding tools. There's none, none that opens up doors, uh, gives you credibility, and can create a movement quite like a book, which is why now's the time to do it. Now's the time to do it. People need your information. Need it badly, badly, badly. All right? So keep a smile on your face. I know the world is a crazy place right now. That's good news for you and me, okay? Because people are out there looking for answers and solutions to their problem. That's it. We went a little long today, but for a very good reason. I love you and I like you, and I will talk to you soon. Ed Talks Live is out. <laughs>